Is it just me or is the speed at which we are spiralling around the global drain somehow accelerating? I put one video out a week. Here's the things that I'd like to talk to you about this week. Um, first of all, Rishi Sunak says that he's going to raise the salary that UK citizens have to earn in order to bring a spouse or partner into the UK. They're raising it to almost 38 grand, which means that, for example, many doctors wouldn't qualify as earning enough. Now, you might think that this is to defend, you know, our benefit system and make sure that we don't bring people in who then end up relying on benefits. Um, but there is already a system in place whereby people who come in as spouses are put on a thing called no recourse to public funds. And it's a huge problem because it means that when, for example, women come to the UK to marry people in the UK and then those relationships turn violent, it's very difficult to get those women into um, refuges and shelters because they can't have access to government funding to support their stay in there. And it's something that women's rights campaigners have been campaigning about for a really long time. So it's got nothing to do with benefits. It's just a way of stopping people moving to the UK if you hate them because they're not as rich as you. And let's just you know, pause for a millisecond and think about who is most likely to be affected by this. Well, obviously, it is people who have roots not only in the UK, but also elsewhere, whose family and community are spread across more than one country. And mm, what ethnicity are those people most likely to be? Is it by any chance not white? Yeah, of course it is. This is going to affect people from South Asia, people whose background is in the Caribbean, people whose background is in Africa, people whose background is anywhere around the world. Um, and therefore part of their community is there and the chances of them going back and visiting family and all that kind of thing and meeting or being set up with someone, that's exactly where this is most likely to come from. And of course, that's why the Tories think that they can get away with it. But it's also going to affect just thousands and thousands and thousands of people across the UK from all backgrounds who like to travel around the world and meet people and maybe fall in love with those people because guess what, that should be legal could go into it in much more detail, haven't even got time. So also this week, it's been revealed that the Environment Agency is allowing the water companies to basically reg regulate themselves when there is a pollution incident. Um, it has to be recorded, obviously. So we're talking about water companies chucking raw sewage into our water systems. The water companies are then turning around and going, oh, no, it wasn't a, you know, a top level incident. It was actually a lower grade incident. And the Environment Agency is going, oh, OK, that's fine and not checking. Um, so, for example, just one of the examples that they had is that in the northwest of England, um, there were 931 reported water company pollution incidents. That's when they're admitting they've polluted the water system. And the Northwest Environment Agency attended six. And as a result, because these incidents have been downgraded, companies like United Utilities have then met their targets in not having above the number of serious incidents that they've been told they'll be punished for. And instead, they're being rewarded. So United Utilities is being allowed to raise another £5.1 million by increasing bills for 7 million customers because they met their target for the number of serious pollution incidents. But the Environment Agency hasn't actually checked whether all the incidents they downgraded from serious to not that serious were actually met the criteria for that. Um, as a result, um, one of the places where raw sewage has been tipped and the whole situation has been covered up is, um, is Lake Windermere. I don't know if you've heard of it. If you haven't heard of it, you can look it up because it's a World Heritage Site. We are rewarding United Utilities for saying, and we have not checked, that they only chucked a small amount of sewage into Lake Windermere World Heritage Site. And I could talk a lot more about this, but again, there's other stuff we need to be talking about. I'm still seeing people on social media suggesting that calling for a ceasefire in Palestine is anti-Semitic. And I really want to address this one absolutely head on. 
the most anti-Semitic thing that people could do at this point is to not call for a ceasefire in Palestine. And I want to be very clear, I am not suggesting that Israel's actions are any justification for anti-Semitism because the actions of the Israeli government are not the fault of Jewish communities around the world. They're not even the fault of individual people in Israel um, who may or may not be Jewish. However, the simple fact is that the more bombs fall on Hassa, the more people in Palestine are going to end up joining Hamas, right? When your family is gone, they've been killed, brutally murdered in front of you. When your home is gone, your hopes and dreams and all that sort of thing are gone. Is it any surprise at that point that people turn around and decide that they're going to fight back, they're going to retaliate, even if they know they're on a hopeless mission just to just to feel better about the situation or whatever. The fact is that the more bombs you drop on Hazza, the more people are going to join Hamas and the more sympathy Hamas gathers around the world because people see these horrific, horrific images of atrocities being committed. And the bigger and stronger Hamas gets, the more they will attack Israel and the people that are most likely to get killed when that happens are, of course, Jewish people. So if you value Jewish people's lives because you are not anti-Semitic, then the most important thing you can do is to call for a ceasefire immediately. Of course, a ceasefire from Hamas, because I'm a pacifist. I want everybody to stop fighting. Of course, we want both sides to stop fighting. But we don't have any real influence over Hamas. What we do have influence over is Israel, because we have been providing them with military diplomatic support right across the board and selling them arms. And we need to stop. And on top of that, this week, we also found weapons that had been dropped on family homes in Hazza, completely innocent families. And those bombs had been manufactured in the US. So yes, it is absolutely true that weapons manufactured outside of Israel are being dropped on Palestine right now. Um, could go into it more. There's more to talk about. On a vaguely related subject, Keir Starmer this week, people have been arrested for for shouting at Keir Starmer, asking him questions about the death toll in Gaza. Like, even if you believe that that death toll is justified, which is a frankly entirely unsustainable, horrifying, disgusting position to take, surely if you believe it's justified, you believe it's okay to ask the question, why is it justified? And, you know, this answer, which is so blindingly obvious, should be repeated at that point. People have been arrested simply for asking. And they're asking Keir Starmer, the leader of the opposition, not only is it his job to listen to these people, not only is it his job to support free speech and encourage people to be able to ask these very, very important questions. As a matter of fact, it's his job to ask these freaking questions. He should be challenging Rishi Sunak on every single thing that the UK is doing to support the military actions of the Israeli authorities. Of course he should. The work that Rishi Sunak is doing out of Cyprus, shipping weapons over to Tel Aviv, asking the questions that he's been told are not going to get answers to. He's the leader of the opposition. Even if he believes the situation is justified, it is still his job to ask those questions. He's not doing it. And here we are. What is this? Point number five, point number six. This is how much things are spiralling towards the drain. The final thing I want to mention this week is, oh, Incidentally, there's a report out from UNICEF that says the UK is doing the worst in developed countries like the whole of the EU and the OECD. The UK has, is doing the worst at reducing child poverty. The child poverty rate in the UK has gone up by 20% over the sort of seven-ish years since the last time they did a full survey on this. And Incidentally, there's 39 countries on that list. We've Ours has gone up by 20%. The second on the list, theirs has gone up by like 11%. So we're not just the worst on the list. We are the worst by a country mile. And we are now 28th out of that list of 39 countries for our overall rate of child poverty. It is appalling. Absolutely atrocious. And, and that should be, you know, a front page, a headline. That should be the thing that, you know, people are looking at. But 
there's just so much, so much awful, awful stuff going on that, you know, UNICEF says we're the worst for child poverty. I, I, I've had to mention it as a sort of extra, extra bonus thing, you know. Change needs to happen. We need to stay on top of this stuff and not be distracted by, you know, all the commercial Christmassy stuff that's going on. Because, yeah, there's real, real stuff going on at a rate that I can't even really get my head around, to be honest. See you next week or possibly in about 10 minutes time when something else goes absolutely ridiculously horrifically wrong. Increasingly, the mainstream media is terrible at informing the public of what is really going on. I'm only able to make these videos because people are generous enough to sponsor me making them. And if you're able to be a part of that, I would hugely appreciate it. It can cost as little as one dollar a month and you'll get loads of fun bonus content and lots of extras from me and my undying gratitude. I also massively appreciate it if you're able to like, share these videos and let people out there know what's going on.